Another new feature in ArcGIS Pro is Big Data Connections, or BDC. BDCs allow you to quickly connect to data sources to visualize and analyze large data sets. Today, I'm gonna to demonstrate how to create a BDC and use that connection as a feature input to other geoprocessing tools. BDCs work with a variety of data formats. Some common workflows for using a BDC are having multiple shape files that collectively make up a data set. So let's say several shape files that make up a large area, each representing a subset of your overall study area, such as 50 individual shape files, one for each state in the US, and you wanna use them to together to view the entire country, or a set of CSV files. You have a time series of existing CSV files and you get in a new daily, weekly, or monthly file of observations, and you wanna add that to your existing collection. Today, I'll be working with two different data sets to demonstrate the BDC, severe storms and vessel traffic. The storms event database is made available by NOAA and contains the event of all storms and significant weather phenomena having sufficient intensity to cause loss of life, injuries, significant property damage, or, and disruption of commerce. This data set is curated by the National Weather Service and is, spans from January of 1950 to July of 2020. A bulk data download is available in comma-separated files. I've gone ahead and downloaded the storm event details spanning 1950 to 2020. I've extracted the CSV files to a directory called storm details that lives under a folder called storm events. Now I'll create a big data connection to the collection of CSV files that describe the details of the severe storms. Think of a BDC as an organizing bucket. This essentially will create a single aggregated view of all the underlying CSV structured files. We can do this using the Create Big Data Connection Geoprocessing tool. And for this tool, I will use the following parameters. I'm gonna use my pro project root folder as my big data output location. I'm gonna give it the name of storm events and the data source folder is the storm events folder where the CSV uh, reside. So it's just a directory level above the storm details directory where I store those CSV files. Once this tool is executed, it creates a big data connection within my catalog. I can add the existing storm details view to our map. So take note, that BDCs are tools that are prioritized on analysis and not visualization. What's important to highlight here are the processing steps that we're able to bypass as a result of creating the BDC. Prior to the release of the Big Data Connection functionality, we would have needed additional steps in order to visualize this data and use it within a geoprocessing tool. For example, we would have had to run the merge tool or the append tool and most likely the calculate field tool to clean up some of the data types. So let's examine the properties of storm details. Here we can see all the storm events represented across the entire United States. Next, we we'll use the update big data connection properties tool to filter out all of the storms we're interested in. So in this case, we wanna look at tornadoes and we wanna make sure we have the proper time definition set. So expanding the top uh, dropdown on this tool allows modification of both the definition query where I can apply a filter of event type equals tornado, as well as modification of the time settings. Here you can modify the time settings that were established during the initial BDC creation. Here I'm gonna use the field begin date time and the format day, month, year, and time. Once I run this tool, we can learn how many tornado events occurred between 1950 and present. The export of this tool will include a table that gets added to the map, as well as a message, a geoprocessing message that will inform me about the number of storm events that we had uh, within, this, uh, within the storm details. 
So now let's have a look at the details of this. Here I'm going to run the tool this time, uh, describe data set. And we can learn about how many storm events that are actually tornadoes that occurred within the US between 1950 and 2020. We can get to that information through the message of our geoprocessing tool. So in this case, I can see the number of records is 71,556. And my temporal extent is from 1950 to 2020, as I would expect. Now let's see how we can use the BDC in a geoprocessing tool. I'll use the geoanalytics tool, find hotspots using the following parameters. So I'm gonna use my point layer of storm details. I'm gonna give it an output feature class name of tornado hotspots and the bin size is 25 miles. In this case, the neighborhood size that I'm gonna use is 100 miles and the time step interval is one year. And for the time of step alignment, I'm gonna use start time. So this geoprocessing tool is powered by Spark and it runs fast. It quantifies the patterns in the data set and determines where hot spots, cold spots, and patterns of no significance are emerging throughout the entire United States. Here we can visualize the associated patterns from the geoprocessing results. So remember what we're looking at is the data from 1950 to 2020, and we're looking at annual patterns. I chose to demonstrate a tool from the Geoanalytics Toolbox, but it's important to note that I could have shown any geoprocessing tool that accepts points as inputs. BDC datasets can be used across all toolboxes. So now that we understand big data connections and the way they can be utilized with Geoanalytics tools, I'd like to cover another workflow using AIS data or vessel traffic as a use case. Vessel traffic data are an invaluable resource made available by the US Coast Guard, NOAA, and BOEM through Marine Cadaster. This information can help marine spatial planners better understand users of ocean space and identify potential space use conflicts. I've gone ahead and downloaded the AIS data for 2019, which is 365 CSV files, one for each day of the year. And I've extracted them to a directory on my computer called AIS. Each file contains the locations as points of commercial vessels from the shipping, transportation, and fishing industries with the associated time. So now I'll create a big data connection to this data using the following parameters. I'm gonna specify my pro project root folder as the output location for the BDC. The output big data connection name is AIS and the data source folder is AIS. This is just a directory level above the daily CSV directories where each CSV file is stored. So what's important to note here is each one of those, these CSV files is in an independent directory underneath that root folder. Here within our catalog, we can find the AIS BDC and we can add the first day of the year to our map. We can see the vessel traffic for the first day of the year in 2019. And now let's utilize this layer in a geoprocessing tool called Reconstruct Tracks to compile the ship track lines for the entire day. So in this case, I'm gonna use the following uh, settings uh, for this tool. The input layer will be the points layer for my big data connection. My output feature class is reconstruct tracks, suffix added to that name. And in this case, I'm gonna bring across the track fields, MMSI, vessel name, IMO, vessel type, length, width, draft, and transceiver class. The method is geodesic and the distance split is 10 miles. In about 30 seconds, we can see the results of the reconstruct track tool. These lines represent the patterns of every commercial vessel moving within the entire United States. The speed at which this tool ran to produce these tracks is pretty impressive. With this workflow, I could process all the AIS tracks for the entire year, the 
2019 within a single day. So I found the dynamic on the fly spatial and temporal aggregation capabilities of BDC useful in my own work. And we hope these capabilities will help you streamline your workflows also.